The Democratic Republic of Crimsonia have returned to massacre. They have marched across the nation from east to west, then turned north to engage the Free Massacan Army at Finkelmoss Farm. Brigadier General Sequoia has led the Crimsonians to victory, crushing the Free Massacan Army and breaking their will to resist. Attacked on two sides, the Guards Brigade break and run into the swamp. Former President Bosworth disappears into the countryside. General Zapporta escapes the battlefield, rallying troops and trying to form a line to defend Asadero, but the soldiers are unwilling, demoralised. They cast off their uniforms and disperse. Only Tuttle's cavalry survivors return to the capital in any kind of order, and they find the city in chaos as many citizens attempt to flee. The city cannot be defended. All of the cannon were lost in the field. President Tuttle is escorted from the capital by his son's troopers after handing over the government to President-elect Starr. In his farewell address on the steps of the Congress, Tuttle declares, I believe that Mousikans will one day breathe free, but I am an old mouse and doubt very much that I will live to see it. I do not want to see it shackled either. My heart will not bear it. I flee for the continent to tell of the treachery of Crimsonia to all that would hear of it. It is all I can do. My small part left to play in this tragedy. Then President Starr also addresses a small crowd. Let all mice who yet dare to remain free and independent know this. Massacre is not yet lost. Though the oppressors may have won a terrible battle, they are in a strange, hostile land, cut off from home and fighting for a cause they don't believe in. Our armies may be beaten or smaller, but we know this land. It is in our bones. We fight for liberty, for ourselves our brothers, our descendants. As long as we do not lose in spirit, as long as we hold on to our joint dream, we cannot lose. They may take our lives, but they cannot take our spirits. And there does Mausica truly live. Not in banners, not in buildings in Asadero, not on a map, but in the hearts of brave mice like I know you all to be. So let us fight on with a resolve never seen before. Let us kill the Crimsonian where we find him, on the field, on the forest roads, in the beds of our homes they stole. Let them wish they had never won this battle, for we will make it cost them their lives. Massacre is not yet lost. Then President Starr marches north and east with the shattered remnants of the army of Free Massacre, while Tuttle rides south, escorted by his son to Glorth, the only port still open to the Massacans. The next day, the Crimsonians enter Asadero, and this chapter of the story comes to a close. The Crimsonians occupy the richest parts of the country, and their army is much larger than that which remains to the Massacans. But the spirit of independence and liberty is not extinguished. There is more to be told of the Massacan Rebellion, to which our attention will return in time 